All right, boys and girls, we're back. We're bad. We're nationwide. The hell? Why am I dropping frames? Literally not even moving. Uh, dropping frames. Okay, we should be good. Done dropping frames? Okay, we're done dropping frames. All right, we're cool. Give me a mini heart attack right there. Turn the stream on, we instantly drop frames. It feels bad, man. All right. At any rate, what the heck did I do? Oh, I went in the wall. All right. So today we are looking at France versus Canada. Right, we're reviewing the match. France versus Canada. Go ahead and give the old skip arena get to the point where we actually play the game. Initiating the match. All right, let's look at the compositions real quick for both sides. Team France is running Cree comp with Rhine. Makes sense. I like it. Uh, Rhine here is a oh well. Rhine, my pen going to work today. There we go. Okay. There. Everything's all scuffed today. All right, so running Ryan instead of Winston here, uh, it gives you a better front line pressure and it gives you a shield to play around, which is useful against snipers. Uh, France's pathing should be something along the lines of this, and then they'll look to play to control point. Running the Reinhardt over a Winston does mean that you do not have the ability to control the high grounds and you also are limited mobility, which means you're forced to turtle around the point and then speed into a target with your shield blocking all incoming damage. That's the theory behind it. On the other side, we have Canada, who are running anti-goats composition. Makes sense, France did run a fair amount of goats, so it's not really that surprising to see them running an anti-goats comp. I'm uh, expecting Canada to swap, though, once they realize what the compositions are, because Doomfist and Farah are both pretty bad into France's comp, so. Expect to see Fran or Team Canada, rather, swap pretty early into this matchup. Good. Skip to the actual match. All right. Okay, so they run Sombra instead of Doomfist. And on the other side, Ben Best has actually go over Winston. Okay, awesome. So, anti dive versus anti goats. Should be an interesting matchup. Okay, so both teams are just chilling and posturing. Uh, reset call comes out to swap. Yeah, so the call comes out to swap. Sure, four goes widow. Interesting swap here. Huh. Uh, I'm not sure why the widow swap and not swapping off the fire mercy as well. Like we just talked about, fire mercy isn't the best into this comp because I mean, Kree's pretty decently good at countering Pharah. So it's a little interesting to see them stick the Pharah and bring in a widow. I think the idea behind that is that the widow can pressure out the McCree, so the McCree can't free shoot the Farah, which means when the Farah has free reign to spam into the Kree comp, which could work. It'll be interesting to see if it does. Although I think if played, if played properly, France's team just has a pretty drastic advantage with their comps. Why are Winds and Unko on the high ground? They should not be here. So you see that they Team Canada swaps over to Sure 4 over to Widow, which means that as a squishy, you don't want to be peeking the Widow. So until the Widow is called, you want to be playing not here, where Unko and Winds are. You'd rather be playing much more like where AKM is playing, where it's nice and safe and you're not in Widowmaker's LOS. And then once your big beefy tank line, who can't be one shot by Widow, calls where the Widow is, then it's safe for you to rotate out. So misplay from Wins and Unko here. Unko should die, but gets a break heal. Kills Unko man. But definitely a misplay from Wins. Mm, yeah, at this point, Canada's already up a healer. They should just be able to clean the site pretty easily. Which puts France in an awkward position, because retaking into a Widow and Fire is very hard. So, Team Canada took a gamble of switching to the Widow, hoping that the Widow would zone McCree enough that the Far could get value, and their gamble got value. It worked. At this point, 
he, Team Canada is just cleaning up Sagres, so I'm looking to move on to the next fight. Okay, really good high ground control, this is good. High ground control is something that you want to do against their comp. Uh, Team Canada should be playing very aggressive here. They should be looking to control the various chokes that the enemy team can pass from, call which path they are going for, and then once they determine which way Team France is going, they should look to be very aggressive stuffing that choke, playing to utilize their barrage to get a quick little team fight win. On the other side, Team France needs to be careful with how they're passing and looking to actively deal with the Farah coming into this next fight. Okay, so they decide to quickly go bottom. This must have been something that they know Team France does from scrims, because otherwise they shouldn't be able to just predict it that hard without any scouting. Negatu is already in a perfect position for it, so that's a pretty good sign that they had some intel coming to this, the, what was going to happen. Megachu barrages a little bit late though, so it only gets Anka, but that should still be enough to win the fight. At this point, he's just AFK on point, burning them. Yeah, and well, that's a one fight for them. And then they reset and go to the next fight. Kanda coming into this next fight should be looking to use a Diva Bomb, possibly in combination with a Primal or a straight up Primal. Uh, Team France should realize that X uh, should realize that XQC has primal, so because of that, they shouldn't pass through the left here. Because if they do, they'll just get primaled off the map and die. So that'd be a bad passing for them. Instead, Team Canada or Team France rather should pass it down main or go through one of the side paths, but definitely not the left side of the map. That'd be a bad place to pass for them. Uh, France's win condition is to be playing around their diva bomb on the far mercy and dead eye. Hopefully, gets value. Okay, so they trank aggressively to try to pressure out Banny. Banny beats, XCC pops Primal, Beat and Rally are used at the same time. So France so far has used all three of their support ults for one kill. No Diva Bomb doesn't get value. No trades out Onko. XCC dies. This fight's a little bit in France's favor here, but Canada will have more impact ults during this fight. Since Bar Barrage gets a lot more value than Shatter, since Shatter can only hit really one or two people. Megachu gets picked off, so they decide to take this fight dry. Taking it dry the rest of the way, once they lose Sure 4 early in the fight, I think is definitely the right play. They commit Primal, they don't get value. They commit Diva Bomb, they don't get value. Don't waste Megachu's ult into a losing fight, just wait and go next. Which is what they end up doing, which I think is definitely the right play. How does Benvest already die? What the heck? Literally not even done talking about the last fight near he feeds. Okay, uh, so how did Ben best die? He's playing aggressive, his team isn't pocketing him. He gets brought to half HP without a single heal on him? Where? Oh, it's because Wins is taxing Anko. Okay, so right here, uh, we have Ben best sitting at this corner playing aggressive while Wins and Anko are still returning from spawn. If I was France in this situation, I either wouldn't have had Anko go, or sorry, I wouldn't have had Wins go taxi Anko and then played aggressive, or if Wins is committing to the taxi Unko, then I would have played much more conservatively on the point and just try to like reduce incoming spam and stay as high as HP as long as possible until we get six then engage. Okay, so Pogo talks that tosses out a YOLO Diva Bomb. Yeah, that's just a one fight for Canada. That's all off the bat of just like two aggressive positioning from France. First point was a uh, pretty dominant from the side of Canada. So far, at least. I'm assuming they can't touch. Yeah. Yeah, so first point was very dominant from the side of Canada. Some really awkward misplays from the side of France. Uh, key things to stand. Actually, it was mostly just positioning, honestly. Like, they lost fight due to their backline setting up here and dying. And then the fight they finally retook, they lost the hold because their Rhine was positioned here where the supports were still returning from spawn. So. First point was majority just France having poor positioning. Going forward, we'll hope to see them rectify that. Uh, did I scuff it? I did scuff it. Okay. Let me rewind it five seconds. And play it out. Okay, so Team France is again running Kree Comp, but this time they're running it with a Moira and a Rhine. So they're basically running Goats 
without the Zarya at this point. And on the other side, Canada is running an anti goats comp, or the Doomfist Summer comp, which is basically a counter to goats comp. So I would assume Team France expected Canada to continue running anti goats comps, and Cree is very good into anti goats for the most part. So I'm assuming that they are favoring putting an AKM on Cree here in order to help negate the uh, counters coming out of Canada. Would be my guess at least. Canada's playing for the Sombra to pull attention, by the way, and then for the Doomfist to come in. So Canada will look something along the lines of Sombra will sit back here and shoot the backline or try to get a hack. And during this process, the Doomfist will come in, cause disruption, allowing the rest of Canada to follow up, hopefully getting an anti-nade and the tanks to collapse afterwards. That's the ideal strategy, at least. So that's what we see here. It's sure force already preemptively on the flank, getting ready to start pushing them out a little bit. Magnitude is getting ready to go in. Same with XQC and Note. Good job here from Shurfor to play a little bit slower and not just like instantly start committing. Like he's playing a very passive poke right here, which is very good because we see that on the other side, XQC and Note both got chunked really low. So they're playing passive, getting healed before they commit. A good heads up play here and communication from the side of Team Canada. French should be pulling the trigger at this point. Uh, they know that there's a Sombra behind them and that they can either force the Sombra or force the rest of the team. Those are your two best options. So once again, they can either walk forward and force out the Sombra behind them or walk into the bulk of the team and take a 65 because they know the Sombra can't do anything. Either of those options is a decent option. Sitting into control point is okay as well, but it's a little bit risky. It's a much more passive option. And typically when you're running a GOATS-esque style composition, you want to be the aggressors. Okay, so we see XQC and Note late committing to the point. I think they were trying to stall it so it wouldn't cap. Uh, XQC should die for this, yeah. Make sure you try to commit, gets hard pocketed, notes just stalling. At this point, it's a reset from the side of Canada. Canada took too long to engage. They also had an awkward pathing phase here. Uh, if we go back to the beginning of pathing right here, we see that with the exception of Surefour, who just recalled back. Uh, so Sur Surefour was originally over on the right here, which is good. And then we have XCC and Note playing here, which is fine. But then we have all three of the backliners playing together. Or, sorry, we have both supports and the Doomfuzz playing together. So there are only really two angles to look from. What I would have liked to see much more, rather than having XQC and Note pass the left here, I would like to see that flipped. And I would have liked to see coming on the right somewhere, both the tank line with the Doomfuzz coming through main with the supports late in the fight and the Sombra coming in through right. I think if they did that second, uh, if they did the second one that I said, where they had... Sombra coming along the left instead of the right, so over here. And then Doomfist with supports to main and the tanks on the right, it would have given them much more opportunities for engages. The tanks could passively walk up and touch point from a much wider angle. So there's much more that France will have to deal with. Uh, Sombra will also still be able to go on a flank and apply pressure, and the Doomfist will have an easy rollout where he will be in supports LOS the entire time. I think that would have been a better rollout for Team Canada in this situation. But instead, they kind of get stuffed in a doorway and late touch point and get punished for it. It's Very aggressive play out of the side of France there. They get a bit of an advantage and they play hyper aggressive into the spawn of Canada, trying to start a spawn hold. Canada on the other side swaps to Mirror, uh, but with Zen instead of Moira. Unko gets trans or rally, not rally. What are they called? Coalescence. There we go. Gets coalescence, so he uses it aggressively to keep Ben Best alive, just to reset tempo and apply pressure on to Canada. The rest of France plays rather passive with it, though. Uh, typically, when you see coalescence come out and you know the other Ryan is missing HP, you'd see the rest of France push up into him here. But instead, they kind of just chill and hold this choke instead. I would have much preferred to see France be at least a little bit aggressive and walk into Canada, start forcing them back, try to apply a little bit more pressure, get out some more resources, and then reset. Because if nothing else, you at least force resources. Resor uh, resources, English is a hard language, sorry guys. Okay, so they engage now, but they already gave Canada the time to reset, or at least should have reset, but unfortunately Canada splits on the reset, and Mega 2 ends up getting picked off, as does Banny. I don't know, really weird fight overall from Canada here. France waited a little bit too long, in my opinion, and then got aggressive. Canada split really hard on the reset. They should have just played together and kited. Would have been much. You would have won the fight there. 
your account of a new display together. That's actually really big. Okay, so they go for a Bash Shatter combo. Uh, since both sides don't have a Zarya, no bubbles are in play, so it's purely just not getting stunned. A uh, good speed boost combo leads soon to getting a stun, and Ben Best getting a nice little shatter. And by a little shatter, I mean he hits a six man, which is a fight winning. Canada's in a really bad spot right now. Uh, it's very hard to retake in this situation where you have no ult and the team has a significant ult lead. I mean, realistically speaking, Canada has like three ults, two of which are sport ults, and those are going to be used either to play aggressively or sustain. Another aggressive die play and spawn coming out of France. Uh, gets Note Max, that's good. Not sure why Note was in that position. He should have been able to keep his mech up. Canada's forced to push because it is, after all, OT, or about to be uh, low time on the clock. They rally, XQC gets stunned, they commit the trans to keep everybody alive and get to point faster. XQC gets stunned again. He makes it a point to get stunned again. France is doing a very good job of just focusing XQC here. Sure, four minutes just to pick up AKM, and the fight's in favor of Canada. Uh, yeah. France did a lot of kiting there, and I would have liked to see them not do so much kiting. I also would have liked to see them hold the Dead Eye play for a little bit and try to get out a little bit more resources and then use it, rather than using it that aggressively as they were trying to path. I guess the thought process for France was try to force out support LTs, which makes sense, but again, I think it would have been better to wait a little bit longer with it. France coming into this next fight has a Diva Bomb and a Beat. They also switch to Full Goats. On the other side, Canada has another Shatter and Diva Bomb. I expect to see Note to throw the Diva Bomb deep and then Sure 4 and Mangachu try to stun Ben Best in order to get the uh, Shatter off onto him to combo Shatter Diva. Good and slow it nice and down. See what happens here. The so both sides are taxing to get control of point. Speed boost in. They're looking to commit on to XQC who has Shatter. He gets stunned. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Bubble comes in late because the Zarya and Diva weren't with Orion. Like we talked about before, when you're playing Goats, you want your Zarya, Bridget, and Reinhardt to always be together, D.Va situationally, but definitely Ryan and Zarya need to be standing together with the Bridget. So AKM wasn't able to get mobile in time because he was LOS, which means they get the Bash Shatter off in time. XUC does pay for it with his life, and Crimson's in a bit of a bad spot though, so this might be able to trade back and forth. Crimson needs Peel like right now. They end up tranking, nice, this is good. Ben Best charges back to point just to try to make sure they're focusing the objective better. Nerf this. AKM is hacked because Sure 4 retook on Sombra. Poco's forced to Diva Bomb in a very awkward spot, but it does zone off a lot of Canada from touching the point. Fight's still just kind of. Back and forth. No, both teams are not committing to a target, and they're just like kind of sitting there, just stalling, waiting for something to open up. Canada's just trying to live until XCC gets back. It's a good stun until the Rhine, forcing him back. Zarya is just ending her hack, so she gets a bubble. Oh no, she gets hacked during her bubble. That's actually really big. Soon overextends and gets picked. Poco is being very aggressive by himself. He should be able to get punished for this. He also gets hacked as well, that's pretty bad for them. Ben Best has ult here, so we should be looking for that to come in in a second here. Poco almost gets out, but gets hacked. Loses mech, that's pretty big. Ben Best is being pressured, so he can't comfortably shatter. Dies trying to pin on the point. France decided to take it dry the rest of the way. Okay. Uh, okay, so coming into the next fight, sure, Canada has an EMP, so expect for them to play for that. On the other side, France is playing for a Shatter again. So let's see if France can combo out the Shatter. Okay, so they speed in. An EMP goes off, but it doesn't hit the Ryan Bridget, so they can still get off Bash Shatter here. 
There's the bash. There's the shatter. Gets two. That's pretty big. Banny counters both shatter or counter shatter with beat. It's good. Unko has Trank coming into this, so they need to kill him before he gets unhacked and can pop Trank. They aren't quite able to do it, so he gets Trank off. Both sides are back out of stalemate. Crimzo almost has Trank again himself, so they'll be looking to use that during the fight. XCC is on a merry adventure in Narnia and pins Uncle out without dying for it. That's really big. Does Unko's Trank end before he gets pinned or after? What do you guys think? We'll see. After. Feels good, man. Crimzo's desperately running to try to help XQC because everybody from France is more or less chasing over to kill XQC. Crimzo's in a bit of an awkward spot, but really needs to get out of dodge here because he's kind of in the middle of no man's land. Same for XQC. Both of them are just in really awkward spots. They managed to get Poco's mech, which is big. XQC is split and trying to regroup. Huge grab for Make AM hitting all the supports for Canada. Banny has a very value amp coming into the fight. Another big armor pack out of Mingachu. Isn't able to keep him up though. Banny lives nonetheless and is trying desperately to save his life. This should be a lost fight from Team Canada. It's like what a. Uh... Six, six v three, six v three for Canada or Canada down rather. Win still has beat. Yeah, at this point, all France needs to do is just clean up kills and they'll be able to win. Which after a little bit looks like they're doing. Before is being a sneaky little beaver waiting to touch. Touches and is forced out. And Banny can't touch the time. Okay, so that's the round. Alright, uh, not a bad round. Team Canada just had a really awkward time getting out of the gate, and once they finally did get out of the gate, they got punished pretty hard and weren't really able to do anything. France did a good job of being very aggressive with the spawn hold, and in general, just playing a very clean match. I'd like to see them do it again here. Alright. Both sides look to be running Goats. Should be interesting. We have Goats to Zen versus Goats with Anna. Should be interesting to see which one wins. XUC pins out as does Ben Beth, both Ryan's meet. XUC takes more initial chip damage because the other team is running a Zen, whereas he is running an Ana. Both bubbles are used early. They speed forward. Sure, four steps forward with self bubble. Help soak damage. Ben Best gets the ally bubble. Mangachu gets stunned by Soon. Soon no longer has stun. AKM use self bubble. Both bubbles are down for the side of France and US. Or sorry, and Canada. XCC gets blown up because they don't have bubbles and can't peel for him. Uh, definitely misplay from Note. Does Note have DM? Which one are you, Note? You are this one. You don't have DM, so you're DMing him and he gets killed anyways. That's unlucky, Rubber Ducky. Sometimes you just run out of DM. People die. It happens, even to the best of us. Okay, point is still is yet to unlock. Will France be able to cap in time? Who do they send to cap? Send wins to Captain Blaine. He gets hacked. The rest of the team is forced to counter and save him. Canada swaps over to dive. Dive, more or less. Okay, nice. Doomfist. Excuse me, what? How? Okay, hold on. We gotta. So, sure, four touches point. Hacks wins. The fight's devolving. The support line. For France is low. Unko is about to die. XUC gets bashed and pinned, so he's like super dead. Bubble comes in on Unko because Unko's low HP. Wins is amping heals now onto him. And Mangachu does soon have stun? Soon has to have stun, right? No, he doesn't have stun. He doesn't have stun for five seconds. Wins. Has boop but no amp. Okay. Okay, so wins his boop but no amp. Mega or soon doesn't have stun and Mega G's coming in with it. He lands. It's the wow, he hits projectile bullet on both of them and uppercut damage on both of them as well as slam. That's crazy. Balanced hero, boys. 
Uh, then the other balanced hero looks at him but can't do anything because Mangachu yeeted his way out of there so he wouldn't die. That's some value and a half right there from Mangachu. At this point, France should lose this fight. They don't have a single support. AKM gets picked. Ben best you shatter into a lost fight and eventually will die. Poco will eventually die and so does soon. France shouldn't have committed ults to that fight because the fight was lost anyways. The second you lose both supports, there's no real coming back from that. You're kind of just scuffed and you should just reset. Okay, so at this point, both sides are just taxing each other back, getting ready. So AKM is going to touch point or uncloak on point to pull attention, I would assume, to allow France to get out of the choke. And we'll probably go for a hack on the other side. Canada's just going to play for a Nano Winston to build up Primal or a Nano Doomfist, either or. I would prefer to see Nano on XUC rather than Mangachu, just because of the fact that, uh, while yes, Nano Doomfist does one shot like a bunch of stuff against France's comp, it's also very punishable by a Bridget, which is very scary. If you go in with like a punch and you get canceled out by Bash, then you're kind of just laying there, you're not really getting value. Whereas on the other side, if you give Nano to XQC, he can go like super ham with it and just farm up Primal and use that later in the fight as well. Okay, and what did I say was gonna happen? Exactly what just happened. So they give Nano to Mangachu, he gets stunned by soon and doesn't really get value. Well, he didn't get value, he comes back in. Doesn't get value again. Lands, doesn't get value, gets stunned again and dies. Yeah, okay, that's why you don't nano Doomfist, by the way. It doesn't get you as much value as Nano Winston. It may look like it's a good idea, but it's typically not a good idea. Do the skybox on this is really annoying. Okay, uh, at this point, it should be more or less a one fight for France. Canada lost like all their damage. Oh! JK, I forgot that EMP Diva Bomb. I, my mic might have been in the way to see that. Unlucky. Okay, so EMP Diva Bomb combo comes out of the side of Canada. It's good on them. Wins gets hacked and punished. Poco is purpled and off in nowhere land. Poco's playing point. Pops ult and gets punched. Feels bad, man. France again committing ults to a lost fight. Like, they already down players there. And Uncle Pops uh, beam. I really hope he's swapping. Okay, unlucky. He's just not swapping. Ben Best is way far ahead. Uh, yeah, Ben Best is a little bit too far forward. Maybe some miscommunication on the side of France, not saying that they're all there or something, but he's being like super aggressive and Unko's about to get ganked, I'm pretty sure. He uses Ball to heal the team because the team's there without him. Surefor gets a hack on him. Hack came in a little late, wasn't able to do anything. XCC gets stunned and isn't able to get Primal off. France is taking the fight to the point. Okay. A good hack from AKM to counter the dive. Just to, secure, uh, just to secure the fight as well. Securing fight is typically a good play. XUC shouldn't commit primal here. If he does, it's going to be a bit of an issue. Sure, force forced out. It's pretty good. Okay, so it's a clean fight from France. A bit of a misplay on the side of Canada. XUC committed too early and sure, forward didn't get value out of the hack on Anka. He could have gotten a lot sooner and it would have had more value. Kind of just debating which way to path. They're going to have Surfor touch point. They have an EMP play as well as a Nano and a Winston ult. Should be interesting to see how they combo these. Okay, so Ben Best goes for an ult, but gets hacked during the process of it. So he actually doesn't hit anybody with Shatter. That's pretty big. I should probably slow this down to normal speed. And they, Team Canada follows up on their hacks. Good job, Team Canada. Very clean fight. At this point, Francis has to trickle in one by one as they can. That beat doesn't get the most value in the world, but kind of works, I guess. Probably could have held that beat a little bit longer if I was wins. Uh, nope, pops a diva bomb to just zone point and try to live. Soon isn't able to kill him. Ben Best gets picked, wins gets picked, and this point just clean up for Canada. The hack might actually change it though. This is actually pretty close. Crimson needs to live, and if he lives, then he can keep Note up, and if Note up stays up, then they win. 
bring oh, okay. Alright, so France brings it back in a desperate overtime push. They managed to cap it out. Good job, France. Definitely a misplay on the side of Kando there as well. There is no situation where players touch one by one and you lose that fight of six. You have to win those. Okay, so... And that's coming high ground. AKM's def desperately trying to build his eh, EMP. Kind of wraps the other way. Almost get the kill on the soon. Get the kill on the Poco right before he can remake. That's pretty big. He should have Pogo should have been next to Wins and Anko. I'm not really sure why he wasn't there. Uh, XCC gets a nano, so he's big and scary. They EMP Anko as soon as he goes for beam for like the third time this map. And then it's a cleanup for Canada. France once again just having really scuffed positioning. If they lose it, it's gonna be off the back of their poor positioning. Soon taps and leaves, recalls. This is just clean up from Canada. They should be able to win this hundred percent. Kill the trace from point, thank you. All right. Force the Moira to fade in. Kill the Moira. XCC's primaling just to make sure nobody can touch, and that's the map. All right. Uh, yeah. France had some poor positioning issues there for sure. Mm, really weird play in general from France. I'm not really sure what they were doing. Really scuffed positioning. Some awkward fights. They had a really good retake. Canada also, on that last map in particular, lost a bunch of fights they really shouldn't have been losing. Like, they were in position to win super hard because France just gifted them the win and then they didn't follow up on it. But in general, France looking like they had some pretty serious positioning issues. Okay, what are we running today, boys? Give me something good. Okay, we have Canada running a fairly typical defense that we see here a lot. What the heck? This thing just lag? Okay, so Canada running a fairly typical defense that we see a lot. They're running a Farah Mercy with a Sombra Winston Diva. So, basic idea for this composition is that we'll have our friendly little Fair Mercy flying somewhere around this tower, just raining death down from above as it chokes. Then we'll have our tanks playing flank angles. Uh, and then controlling this joke right here and applying pressure there and then punishing them as the other team attempts to pass to point with the Sombra doing the same from behind and attacking and whatnot. Uh, on the other side, theoretically, France is going to be playing this. We'll find out in a second. It's interesting that they slow or that they speed up the voice acting, but they don't slow down the voice acting. It's pretty weird. Okay, so Shafor gets full information on what they're running because he's literally sitting in their spawn. France decides to run Cree Comp. Cree Comp is good. It's also good in this composition. The basic idea is that you just need to walk at one of Canada's tanks and kill them before they can do anything, and then win the fight off of that. So, for example, uh, run down mid, walk on the Diva, bash the Diva twice, or bash the Diva and then crease down the Diva and then kill the Diva. And then taking that advantage of having an HP superiority, play to point and carry out uh, focusing point with your superior HP. AKM gets split from his team. Miscommunication there, they all rotate together. That's a couple of really important cooldowns used. They used AMP, which means they can't engage, and they also used Armor Pack, which means they can't burst heal. So that's an engage condition coming out for France. Early. Ben Best is really low and is forced to kind of chill and heal for a second. Wins is not healing his tank line at all. He's kind of just chilling with Anko, which is a little weird. What is France doing? Okay, so with France's composition, you want to death ball as six and walk towards the objective. And then once you get onto the objective, you want to stun a tank. So preferably, the most optimal passing here would be they group as six and they'd walk through here, walk over here, and then walk to point. And while walking to point, they'd run into a different tank and then stun them twice and kill the tank. That's like the ideal passing here. Instead, what we see France doing is they take a lot of poke damage initially, have their two tanks commit to the point with the four people play together as a backline, kind of just turtling. 
and poking up a farm, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. You kind of just need to walk to point as a group, because if you don't walk together to point, you're not going to get kills, and you're not going to win, because your comp's purely based around punishing their, uh, punishing them for having poke damage. I can't pick Scrims out. That's good. They already lost their main tank, though, so they can't really commit to this fight. Poke is also low, so he kind of has to chill. They use amp again to heal, which means that they won't have amp to speed engage, which means they can't really do anything, because... Banny can just amp heal and speed and get away, and they're not going to be able to get onto XQC because the backline doesn't have speed to get onto him. So Poco tries to commit to the Winston because that's the play, but he's brought very low in HP and is forced to reset. Uh, Surefor was pestering Ben Best along the way in, so he's forced to use Bubble and Leap. Poco DMX Note, which is good, and they cap. Okay. Uh, interesting. What was the rest of Canada doing there? They threw that that hard. Okay. The Crimzo is still alive at this point. XQC gets poked really low. He gets starts getting pocketed. Benvest solo commits. It's countered over and killed. Crimzo gets two tapped by uh, AKM. Both sides are kind of just chilling. Uh, Banny's passively healing XQC. He amps to get out of dodge. XQC gets... Agility gets picked. Okay, so I guess France just plays it slow and eventually gets picked because of misplay on the side of Canada. Crimson should have been... Well, I'm not, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna flame Crimson too hard because getting two tapped is just pretty unlucky, but... Uh, Canada definitely should have played that better. France, like didn't play the comp at all how the comp was supposed to be played, fed their main tank for no reason off to respawn, and then France, or sorry, Canada still managed to throw the fight, which is very unfortunate. Dude, Sombra's going two times speed, it's crazy. Okay. Uh... Okay, so remember like a second ago when I said that France's comp wants to play as six, right? They want to play as a death ball and play together and push stuff together. Mm, wait, is that four or is that three? That's uh, no, it's four, okay, because there's somebody over there. And then we have Crimzo. Or not Crimzo, then we have Unko over there by himself. So France is currently doing a 1-1-4 split. I think what happened here is that somebody called to push high ground. So soon an Unko followed up on the call to push onto the high ground. Unko stopped. Soon didn't, and everybody else just kind of sat cart. Uh, I'm not sure why Wins is here. He should not be here. He should, well, neither should AKM. Like, if you're going to, okay, so you have two options here as France. You can either push through and claim high ground up here, that once you have high ground, you force Canada off of it, and then you can drop back onto cart once you've cleared the high ground. You can play safe where your tanks push cart, and then your backline turtles here, here, or here, and then just kind of wait for the other team to contest cart and then punish them when they do while the free, free fires. What you should not do is you should not just sit in this doorway here where the Doomfist can roll out onto you for free and everybody can shoot you from high ground and stuff. And you also really shouldn't split in a 4-1-1 split, which leaves two of your players out of your death ball to die because the strength of your comp is a death ball. So soon goes up the stairs, Crimson Sleep darts a shield, uh, he screams sure for help, which is basically what happens as he turns around and gets hacked, and then notes counter dives and they die. XQC in the meantime was feeding, uh, or sorry, was committing to a dive but wasn't able to be helped because of soon going on their backline. So at this point, both sides are even. Ben Best commits to the jump to the high ground, doesn't get value, and kind of commits the EMP to win the fight. Okay. What a weird fight, dude. Okay. Uh, France really needs to play together. Their entire composition is built around playing together. If you don't play together, you will lose with this composition. You can do 4 2 splits. 4 2 splits sure do work, where you have your backline play as 4 and your tanks go forward and create space for your backline to do something. Like we saw them do it first. That can work. Uh, you can also play it as a 6 man death ball. That works. What doesn't work is a 4-2 split where you have your Bridget and your Zen go on a solo flank into Narnia trying to kill their backline. Uh, that typically doesn't work out that well like we just saw. 
Uh, ACAM is going on the hot flank. They're running a Sombra now instead of a Kree, which means, ironically, more Death Bally because you want to play fully together and push aggressively. So, you go to Sombra, you play Death Ball with a 5 1 split. Sombra goes on flank, everybody else plays together and focuses down the target, hopefully, getting a hack to combo off of. Poco gets split by himself because he's solo contesting cart with the rest of the team pressing high ground. In a situation like this, if you want to take high ground, you can't leave one person on card by themselves. That person will 100% die. You have to fully commit to taking the high ground. Then once you've fully committed to taking the high ground, then you can go back to playing card. You can't have one player hold card though because they will die. Okay, so France is in a weird spot. They try to take high ground. AKM ends up dying during the process. They commit Trank into a fight that they already lost. They're down two players and they commit Trank? Wait, they commit Trank and Rally? Okay, they commit two support ultis into a fight that they already lost because it's a 4v6. Uh, Canada responds by Diva ulting, which is great, but I mean, you just fed sure for like half of his EMP again, and you lost Rally. Like, Rally is such a big ult in this meta to keep on Zen. Like, if you can get your Zen the extra HP and have him just be like some soupy, super beefy frontliner who can just like run at people and kill them, like, that's super good. Losing that is also very, very, very bad. Yeah, they swap over to Moira now, which makes sense because there's no point in keeping Zen with this. You're just going to keep getting rolled. Okay, AKM is doing his flank again. Benbes gets hacked. He's hacked but holding shield. Okay, I guess he's not hacked. Okay, now he gets hacked. That was weird. Okay, so Benbes gets hacked. Why is it? Oh, this is the one where Wind's fed super hard. I remember this. Okay, I remember seeing clip of this on Reddit. Okay, so. Okay, it makes sense. Wind's. Actually, this play actually does make sense for Wind's. I'm not going to play him. So. Wins rotates to play a safe angle because he assumes that Surefor has EMP, which is a safe assumption because he farmed like crazy. So he plays a safe angle to try to not get hit by EMP. Seeing this, Agility drops down and starts punishing Wins, which is a good play on both players' part. The rest of France is just passively pushing the cart, waiting to get hacked, and Wins will beat them. Wins is just kind of rotating around, not really sure what to do. Agility comes in, soft punches Wins. When starts taking, taking the duel, uh, as a Lucio player, you don't really want to take this duel. You kind of just lose. Because Doomfist has a lot of cool abilities that one-shot you. Or combo into one-shotting you. So Wins decides to uh, run away. They hear the EMP come in during this because Agility is communicating that, hey, I have their Lucio zoned off into Narnia. He's not going to do anything. Uh, Agility is just committing in. Unlucky to be wins right now. Um, yeah, feels bad to be wins. Uh, Agilities is playing Doomfist and punishes. Benbus gets killed. Yeah, it's just a lost fight. So that was all off the back of just awkward positioning from France in general. Uh, in my opinion, a better rotation for wins there rather than playing here would be to have rotated up the staircase and then played there. I think that would have been a safer rotation. You A, you wouldn't show the Doomfist where you're playing preemptively, and B, you're much closer to your team in the case of them getting EMP'd. Whereas in this original position over here, you have to like do a bit of a rotation to get out for B to be able to get value. Okay, coming into this, it's 240 on the clock. France has a Shatter and a Diva Bomb and an EMP. So I expect an EMP Diva Bomb combo, most likely. That'd be my guess at least. On the other side, Canada has a nano and a Doomfist ulti. Please, for the love of God, don't nano Doomfist. Oh, I fast forwarded. All right. Uh, please, for the love of God, France, or Canada, rather, don't nano Doomfist. You're already good enough. You don't need to get commit the nano. Just give it to Surefor. Or right, not Surefor. Give it to XUC. Okay. You get wins. Two players, or three players get hacked. That's actually a really big EMP. Three players get hacked. They use the beam of destruction to try to clean up people. Give Nano to XCC. XCC traces down soon with note. That's a clean kill. And that's the fight.
Good job, Team Canada. Oh, and they're even being aggressive to punish the respawners, or the Sagaris, which gets punished very hard by Vendeth. Uh, this, in theory, this play right here, is a good play in theory. If you know they have a CC ult, like a Shatter or a Grab or something along those lines, it's a little bit less okay to do. It's still okay to go for this play, because if they commit Shatter in their spawn, you, that's pretty good for you. Uh, they, you're still going to be able to get back to cart. Right, if the cart's here, by the time they get there and you full respawn, you'll be able to contest it again right about there. So, it's not the worst trade in the world, but it's a little bit risky of a play. You should know that if you go for that, you're probably going to get wiped, and the rest of your team will have to run away. So, as long as nobody staggers here, that should be fine. Note staggers onto cart, which is fine. Crimson kills himself. Yeah, that's when it gets a little tricky, because Crimson killed himself there instead of running away with... Uh, instead of running away with Benny, they'll probably get the recontest like somewhere in this range, which is not as good as fighting, you know, in a recontest like there, but it's still okay. Uh, I, mm, I think it was probably the right play for Crimson to kill himself anyways. I don't think trying to run away with Benny would actually get value, so. France doesn't try to push the maximum distance. Instead, they go to Stuff Chokes, which I respect. I think Stuffing Chokes is a good play, particularly when your only all is a Diva Bomb. You really kind of just want to, you know, deny the door, exit as much as possible. Wins his AFK, tweeting on payload. Agility goes out and gets hacked. The beat hits five. That's a really good beat. Ben Best is by himself and purpled. He will probably either die or be close to it. Uh, Poco throws a Diva Bomb. Note commits deep so that he can Diva Bomb the back line. The EMP, but doesn't hit Note. Note tries to mech, but dies anyways. XUC has Primal and is going deep in the back line. Bunny runs over with Amp to try to help. Why did XUC go in the room? That's like the worst place for him to go. He lives. Oh, no. I was going to say, if he lives, it's not as bad, but still a pretty bad play. Bunny's just trying to get Uncle, or get the wind's kill since he's low, but can't manage it. They're resetting right now, just waiting for everybody to get back. They'll take this fight in the 5v5 because it's, for some reason, France is taking the fight without the rank. And I can. 60 seconds left and okay so this can't happen you have akm not here you have ben best not here and you're still this forward this aggressive playing into a respawner advantage like you can't be doing that france needs to be playing like here or way further back like any of those three circles would be the safe place for france to play while they wait for respawners you don't want to be engaging or positioning here at least in this area you don't want to be positioning here until your Ryan's like right at that door and your Sombra's back. Or at least one or the other. Like you can't go without your Ryan and without your Sombra. So there's no reason to be playing this aggressive right now. You're just asking for them to commit ults to you and win the fight. Like Unko is forced to like be by himself. He's not gonna be able to do anything. Soon's by himself. Poco dies. Wins is hacked on the card and can't do anything. That's a reset with 50 seconds left. And the fight that you might have won is turned into 30 seconds of waste of time. AKM's on the flank. Oh, does he go for it? He goes for it. Agility says nope. And resets to stop the C9. Good job from them. Okay, so soon rallies together to get a pretty big HP before they go in. This is a good play. Preemptively rallying is always good. They decide to go close passing, which makes sense. They know XCC is in a primal. They know they don't have EMP. All they have to worry about is the Doom Fist ult. They're already all big on HP anyway, so it's not the scariest thing in the world. AKM plays a flank angle to try to apply pressure. Also, if Canada contests here, they have a shatter to play with. That being said, Ben Best gets punched, which is uh, pretty unlucky. You really can't be letting that, ha that happen. You need your Bridget to be with him to cancel that. Oko gets Crimzo somehow, and the rest of France rotates high ground to go the long way so they don't get booped, which makes sense. Should have done that initially, in my opinion, but that's just me. XUC tries to contest point, gets punished, and France does it. They win the fight. Nice. Okay. That was a little bit of a rushed engage. Let's see what happens here. So, cart's coming around the corner. Everything is... Can I stop running at the walls? Everything's hunky-dory. Alright, so they see that Canada's trying to retake, or is in position to start a retake. 
And because of that, France commits EMP and a Shatter, which I like. It's a good play. EMP Shatter here is good. I, teams that, when you're playing GOATS or a GOATS-ish matchup like this is, the team that engages first often will win the fight. So I'm really glad to see that France uh, decided to be very aggressive there. Because that was definitely a very, very aggressive engage. Is there, like, no good camera angles here? Because, like, of the floor? I guess, like, this is the, like, the last I can get. Uh, conversely, the other side, Canada goes for an EMP play, em, yeah, EMP play of their own, but they aren't able to get the bomb off in time. A little bit of a rushed engage from the side of Canada, but France is split and is able to be punished for it, which is, feels good, man. And then they're just cleaning up the kills. Well, let's go ahead and watch the rest of this from, uh, XQC cam. Okay, so 20 seconds, they know this is going to be the last fight. XG's trying to farm Shatter so we can get it up and use it. Both sides don't really have ults, only a rally for France, nothing for Canada. XGC's chilling like a villain. Trying to build Shatter. Good job from the kite. They get the pin off onto Ben Best, they take the pin onto it, that's a good play. A good trade from XGC. If they keep XGC up here and he lives, it's actually big. Which he does. Oh, JK, he doesn't. He ends up dying. But during this, Ben Vest went too deep and got traded out, and the rest of the players from France got split and died. And weren't able to touch the point. Okay, so clean half out of both sides, actually. Second phase looked really weird for France. Had a really awkward time playing the Comp. They brought it back in the long run, though, which is good to see. Am I far, far and away too far forward? Yeah, I'm a little bit too far forward. I think like two minutes there. Unlucky. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, far and away, we had uh, France looking like they had an issue with Krikomp a second, but once they figured out what they were doing, it seemed a lot better. Uh, France is playing with a forward spawn hold. Interesting. I like it. Goats hold and spawn is the classic. Not really, but it's interesting. Uh, they hear no pathing, so they speed out onto him and commit to him. They 100% need to kill Note here. If they don't kill Note here, they're kind of scuffed. They don't kill Note here, so they're forced to run back to point. Uh, sure for is busy contesting the point. Ben Best is... That was almost scary. Ben Best almost got killed for that. Soon slept, so they kind of just got to kill, chill on him. Uh, next engage for France is whenever they have amp, so they'll just be playing around that. As soon as they get amp, they need to engage. Canada's just looking to pull attention on the point and then commit to a backline and kill a squishy. Or burn an out-of-position player. Ben Best gets bursted hard, uses bubble early. AKM uses bubble. They charge forward and don't get anything because it's a dive. It's kind of hard to play goats into dive. Uh, XUC commits abilities, so they kind of just chase him down and are able to punish him. Nice! Good job from France here. Good job chasing down and punching kills that are in the open. That's what we like to see. Okay, so juggling a choke. They get beamed, they play aggressive with it. They grab literally nothing. Crimson doesn't end up getting picked, which is good. Ben Best. Yeah, nice! Good cleanup! This is really good from France. I like this. How do they screw it up? Like, we lose the series, so they have to screw it up somehow, so. So far, it's been a pretty clean forward hold. Like, I mean, AKM's grab didn't get a lot of value, and Soon's beam didn't get a ton. But, I mean, this shatter is good. Man, he just... He got scuffed. He hit a fat shatter, and nobody was there to follow up. Again, like, another instance right there where Ben Busters was, like, too far ahead of his team. His team wasn't really able to follow up with him because of it. If Bum gets Uncle there, there's no way that should happen. They're all in the room. They should have been able to stay alive. Maybe somebody like accidentally bumped into him and forced him into LOS. Uh, yeah. Canada should just go to contest point and everybody else is basically scuffed. This is a lost fight for France. Turns out that's how they screwed it up. We figured it out, chat. Okay, France should be swapping. France should be swapping. France is not swapping. All right, Canada is playing anti-goats and France is staying goats into anti-goats. On a phase where Goats isn't the strongest and anti-Goats is pretty darn good. A little bit weird. Maybe they're just going to take one dry fight or one fight to burn all their ults in the swap. That can make sense. They rush point. I like it. Nice and aggressive. Keep the spawn hold going. Reassert your dominance and all that. Uh, Kenna's just kind of chilling. Punching out. Just living. Nothing too crazy happening here. France used Rally and Amp to engage. Didn't get any value. I expect the Grav Diva to come in. Grav gets eaten. That's pretty bad. He coming out of Canada to keep everybody alive. Anko gets chased down and killed. Soon gets split and killed. And the rest of the goats are falling. 
A lucky rubber ducky. Oh, they're even nice enough to kill Note. So that he uh, gets to reset. Nice of them. Okay. Uh, France should definitely be swapping off Goats here. Goats is not good into its counter, particularly on this map. Or on this phase of this map, at least. Because it's... Uh, the only way you win is Goats in this situation. Is you have to force the fight to the objective. And if you force the fight to the objective, you hope that the other team's tank line commits to you. And when you do, you're able to kill the tanks. If you aren't able to kill the tanks on the point, you're going to lose because they'll just keep kiting around you. And while you may stall time, they'll eventually win the fight just based off the fact that they have characters that counter yours. And they'll just get an engage off that will win eventually. Also, landing Shatter into Canada's comp was a little awkward because Banny and Crimson should never be in a place where they get, could get Shattered. And the rest of their team has to get away so they won't be hit by it. So like I said, they have to commit to point, which is what we see happening here. Ben Best again is way by himself. This has like been the story of this map is Ben Best is just like in an awkward position and the team, the rest of the team as a whole is also caught out and just kind of gets killed. Really awkward positioning coming out of France in general. Ben Best commits an alt into a fight that's already lost. I really hope that since they committed that alt, they're swapping, but I think they're not good because they have grabbed D.Va. France just has like bad ult control, bad positioning. Like, I don't know. It's, it's weird, dude. I don't know what they're doing over here. Feels bad, man, dude. I don't know what's going on. An early primal with e wow. Canada is committing to this fight, dude. They're going in. EMP primal and a diva bomb just to guarantee that they win this fight. I respect it honestly. Like, let's make sure. Like, you're probably going to swap to goats anyways to take third phase. So, screw it. Pop all your tank alts in. Make sure you clean the fight and cap second without an issue. Genius snowball. Yeah, what's up, Suzuki? Okay, so France is finally getting to the phase where their comp is actually good now. They still have grab Diva combo, so I expect for them to run that. Canada swapped over to Pseudo Goats with the Doomfist. Agilities is going in, gets bubbled to going out. They Diva Bomb without using the grab. Diva Bomb gets no value. They beam aggressively without using grab again. They get value from it this time at least. Canada decides to reset because why take a fight when you're down a player? Feels good, man. Poco commits but doesn't get anything, gets out. This is all fine so far. I, a little weird that Kennedy use, or France rather used both of its combos with Grav without using Grav. Would have made more sense in my opinion. Just like if you're going to beam aggressive, then beam aggressive. If you're going to diva aggressive, then diva aggressive. But don't use both when you still have Grav. Uh, they nano doom. I, I mean, I've said this so many times. I don't think nanoing doom is the play. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to consistently be nanoing doom when he's that deniable, which is what we saw right here. Like he goes in and doesn't get value, and he's got to ult anyways. So. Wins is playing ping pong or heart and gets killed. It's a good short pin onto him. Big beat to counter the shatter. Ben Best is getting bullied by Doomfist, and that should be a one fight from Canada. It's a bad position to be in if you're France. You don't have any CC ults, and the other team has shatter. You're gonna have Graveler in the fight too for both sides. Should be interesting. XQC needs to hit a fat shatter here. Let's go ahead and go on to uh, XQC cam. We'll see how he manages to land the Shatter to win the game. Or if he doesn't. The both levels got used already for France. Or for Canada, rather. Both levels used for France. The uppercut Shatter doesn't get value because uh, Bridget and Zarya block it. Feels good, man. Agilities gets picked off. Canada decides to reset. Good play. Minute 30 on the clock. Still doable for both sides. France has a beat and a diva bomb. XUC, or they have a kind of has a grab. It's a really aggressive diva bomb here. Uh, I don't think we'll get value. Yeah, I don't, France keeps checking out these like really aggressive diva bombs really early that I don't really think get value. They also don't follow up on it. Like the diva bomb to split players and like all the players are isolated, but they just like don't commit to the players. They just like let them sit there. I don't know. It seems like France isn't really like super comfortable on goats. It's a big stun onto soon. You see, hits a fat pit, pin with nano. Bridges are traded out. Wait, Aham's grab got eaten? Oh man, that. Yeah, to see, that's like the second or third grab he had to ate this game. It's pretty bad. Diva Bomb to continue to zone. Poco in the back. 
Unko transits just try to like save the tempo here and keep it real live. XQC ends up dying, Crimson ends up dying. Alright, they do it again! France somehow wins a fight that they shouldn't have won yet again. Feels good, man. They chase down the staggers, that's good. It's buying time. They won't be able to touch card until like 20 something seconds now. That's really good for France. How does France lose this? I am really confused. This is a super like winning situation for France. Canada won't be able to touch the card until like 25 seconds. At like at a most. France has a shatter and a rally and almost a trank coming up, and Canada only has shatter beat. XCC is going to have to hit like the fattest shatter of his lifetime here for them to win this. They decided to rotate around. They bait Ben Best. Ben Best was by himself for a minute there. AKM's kind of in no man's land right now. It's a little sketch. Ben Best tries to save AKM and gets stunned. How do they lose this fight? So France just hit a five man shatter. Beat comes down to cover it. Agility dies. Ben Best goes for a deep pin. They don't have bubble. He hits note with the pin. Oh no. That's how they lost it. Ben Best went for a pin. When XUC had shatter, he gets up and he shatters. Oh, this is gonna hurt to watch. So that's a that's a pretty fat shatter, not gonna lie. No, but they're kinda of, they're kinda of living it. XUC is unable to get damage on because Ben Best booped him away with hammer. The they get the trank off. They use both bubbles during the trank to build energy. I, I'm not sure sorry I feel about using the bubbles there, but I mean, I guess if you're big and you want to keep going, that makes sense. There's no way France loses this. Like, there's actually no way. No bombs. Oh, wait, what? What just happened? How did they? There was literally no way they lost that. Okay. They get a grav. They get grafted in a four man. XCC once again charges Poco. Poor Divas. Notes on cart. He's here to get demeked here in a second. Agilities is coming back from a spawn. XCC dies. There should be no situation in which France loses this. They still have Diva Bomb as well. No pops Diva Bomb. Ben Best dies to Baby Diva because he has to shield Diva Bomb. For some reason, he was running towards the Baby Diva. If he didn't run towards him, he would be fine. No Remax. Anko, for some reason, is like super deep. Oh, because he was zoning from the Diva Bomb. So he gets killed by Agilities. Poco is forced to ult in Narnia because he got demacked. AKM is burning Note on point. Wins is there helping. Surefor kills Poco as he tries to Remax. Doomfist comes back as, or soon comes back as Doomfist. He's forced to kind of kite because his team's leaving him to die. So he's just going to die cart. But he isn't dying cart. He needs to just be on cart and die here. He doesn't die cart. That's a definite misplay from him. Like, you're going to get chased regardless. You just die cart. Crimson gets back in time to heal. XCC's almost back. The respawners aren't there for France. If Canada keeps three on cart, it's going to be, like, right on the checkpoint before Canada can touch. Or, sorry, before France can touch. Wait, they don't C9, do they? Oh, okay. I was say, if they C9, that's bad. Sure4 gets a nano because he's super smart and he's just trying to farm. XCC is deep in the back line. France, it's a really big grab, but Ben Best is dead, so he can't swing onto it. And that's a free shatter coming out from XCC. Doesn't really get value though. Yeah, France just isn't able to answer back. That's crazy. Too many players died. Really awkward makes sense. Yeah, all right. Overall, France just had like some. I don't know, really awkward fights, really awkward pathing, composition swaps didn't make sense. Stop. France is looking really weird today. I don't know what's going on. Some scuff J's for sure from the side of France. At any rate, that's going to do it for the stream today. Thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, same time tomorrow. Hope to see you there. Have a nice night.